Sup world, this is Pointless Opinions, and this is going to be my review of the creepy pasta pen pal. Now, before I start this video, there will be spoilers, so you have been warned. This story, I'm not sure who made it, so I'm just going to say the author for me is anonymous. If you want to fill out the details for that, I would very appreciate it, but yeah. With this review, I'm just going to give an opinion, not a scoring system, since I'm not really that much of a huge fan of the scoring system recently. So, yeah, I will be reviewing this segment by segment, telling you my honest opinion. I will leave a link for the first video on the channel, Mr. Creepypasta. Now, you could find the playlist, which would probably just be on the link here. It's probably on the wrong side of the screen since I have the camera piece to flip upside down which usually is great for blogging, not for pointing out which direction the screen is. Now story, I will get started on this review of the creepypasta. The first bit was called Footsteps. Now basically Footsteps was a quick one explaining how this kid, I telling a story. Now, the story didn't make all these events in his life didn't make sense as a kid, but he started to realize them as an adult and he's fighting them down. So basically, he basically moved into a house with him and his mother. Now, I can't remember our main character's name, so I will call him Gary. So basically, Gary, when he used to sleep a lot, he used to get scared of his own heartbeat because when you're asleep and there's no sounds in the room, you hear the, your own heartbeat going dup 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 dup. Now, as a child, you would have an overreactive imagination and think, oh my god, monsters, no, I'm scared. And he would usually go up to get a glass of water or take a whiz. Now, one night he and managed to be awake in the woods, finding himself, I think it was an inf inflatable shark in a pile I'm not sure where. Now, he grew up in these woods and played around in them with a lot with his friend Shosh. So, basically, he woke up all scared and decided that he needed to get his way out. Turned out he walked around in a big circle, so he decided to follow the brightest star. So, he followed the brightest star the way home. He got home and he went home to his mother. His mother was burst into tears. So, yeah, and all there was was a note explaining that he ran away. But when he read the note, he read the note, but he realized that wasn't how you spelled his name. Now, I'm not sure what his name was, but I think Gary's an easy name to spell. I can't be bothered remembering the characters' names. But I have to admit, the footsteps was a good passer. Not many shock twisters, but at the end, good shock twist, like most creepy passers usually deliver at the final shock twist. Now the next one is balloons. Basically, balloons is the one when they ha when they went to school and explained how Gary broke his arm on the first day playing in the trees in the forest. So basically, he's still at the age of six. So yeah, he didn't remember many things through the kindergarten or first grade, I can't remember what it was, but yeah, he couldn't really remember much. So, as he really, wait, what was it, as he recalled, he remembered this project called the balloon one. Now, basically what it was, was you got a balloon, an envelope, and basically what you needed to do was get a piece of paper, and write down what hi I my name is etc I go to this school 
and all that. If you find this, can you please contact me? This is an assignment and all that, so yeah. Okay, and most people usually got the Les. Oh, yeah, and he also put a dollar bill with four stamps, which he did for some weird reason. He thought it was smart at the time, but meh. So basically, most of the pitch or most of the letters came back. Gary's really didn't came back, but when it did, it was mostly unknown pictures. Not well writing at the all how most of the other students got writing, but it's just mostly pictures. And he really couldn't make sense of these pictures since they would usually be on a weird angle or how they wouldn't look like, but yeah. Now then I think it also explained that how him and his friend Shosh also owned a little snow cone business as they both got snow cone machines and how he got the exact same dollar with the four stamps, how they thought it was pretty cool and a coincidence and all that. And yeah. Now the, I think the, what one was it? And yeah, at some point he started to look at the pictures and realized there was a picture of him and his mother. Now he started to align these pictures in a 5 by 10 grid and he realized he was in every single picture and decided to show his mother. His mother really wasn't paying any attention at first, but when she did, she was quite shocked and called the police. He thought the, he was in trouble for showing the pictures, but we didn't know he was being stalked. As your kid, you usually assume the world is peaceful. But sadly it isn't and it's full of shrug lords, gangsters, mafia, and Russian, Mexican, mafia, and people and all that. So, yeah, Balloons was a good creepypasta. Not as many good plot twists, but still had a good few creepy plot twists. The next one, I think it was called, yeah, it was called Boxes. Basically, our main protagonist, Gary, is now 10 years old. Now, it tells him he adopted a cat named Boxers. Now, Boxers was a weird cat and usually went under the house, which usually was too small for him and his mother to go under. But basically, he opened, or his mother usually opened up the floorboard of the bottom of the house to get Boxers out. Now, as the mother usually came out of the house, she seemed quite shocked, but she, yeah, and one day out of the blue, she said, oh, I'm going to move, like, and all that, so he decided to pack his stuff in boxes and all that, and we left two weeks earlier than they usually planned. Which Gary was quite upset because he had to move away from Shosh. So, yeah, he was quite upset, but as time continued, the story continued and boxes have went away. Now, he asked his mom, Oh, where did boxes go? It's, his mother explained, Oh, most animals went away, but they'll find their way home. Now, Gary was a little confused what Boxes thought what home was because basically what he thought his old house could have been Boxes home and might have got confused. So basically he asks his mom, oh can we go back to the old house to look for Boxes? His mother said no it would disturb the neighbours and she wouldn't want to be rude to the new owners of the house. So Gary just thought he would call up Josh and they organized a plan to go to Boxes or to go to the Gary would go to Josh's house for sneak out of Josh's house to look for Boxes. Now basically what happened was when they they went through the forest which Surprisingly, it wasn't a cliche of its own since it was generally quite interesting from 
to go through the forest. And I think they went into the spot when he was a child and he came out from the random blackout with an inflatable shark. Or I'm not sure if it was the next one, but yeah. So basically, they try to go on the floorboard and they just. Them and Shoss discuss through the walkie talkies, which they got for a present. They, who should go under the house and all that. So basically, sh what happened was Gary got the Shoss shore, went on the box, and all he found was um, a dead raccoon, which he thought was something weird, and a blanket and bows. And one of the bows had cat food in it. Um, with Shoss's side, he went in the house, went in Gary's old bedroom, and Gary explained that there would be boxes. Basically, what happened was, Gary's clothes were hanged up, and all the photos of him being stalked were hanged up all over his bedroom wall. A man came into the house carrying a bag, which I assumed which was a... Uh, bunch of dead animals, some still alive, or a person. For me, unknown, but I'm not sure how, if it was a person who would let him escape and all that. But, yeah. Basically, the floorboard got stuck with Shosh clothes explaining, oh, you could get your way out of it, but, yeah, Shosh saved, um, Gary in the end. They went away went home and go and yeah, Shosh and Gary just got home in time before Shosh's parents awoke and and all that and realized that any of this ever happened. Um Gary confronted his mother about the owners and all that and Gary's mother told him that she never put a blanket or bows under the house. And the language she used to describe it, I have to admit, was quite appalling to a 10-year-old child, but... Meh, I thought he was six at the time, so I thought that was even more of a shocking thing, but... Yeah, Boxes was a really intriguing story, but yeah. The next one is called Maps. Now, this one describes basically how... Shosh and Gary usually played around the woods and they decided once their snow cones got taken off for some ridiculous reason which I can't remember but wait oh no I just thought I heard something um which I can't remember they decided to make maps now basically what Gary did he made the map too big that they split into two now Eventually, the map became too big for the forest, so they decided to build a raft out of old materials from a... I can't remember what it was, but it was from a construction yard, and yeah. Now, what happened was there's also a neighbor, I can't remember her name, but basic. I'm not sure why I should call her, I think I'll just call her Mr... Uh, Mister, yeah, I'll call the old lady Mister. So basically, Mister usually called out to Shosh and Gary as Chris and Sean, confusing them for some people which he did not know. Basically, what happened with Mister? Um, she, with her husband, she said her husband was usually on business, which. He died, and her kids really didn't pay much attention, but paid her electricity and all that. And usually, the old lady invited the kids in, which they always said no to, since my mother always said, say, no to strangers, because that's an important thing to always say no to strangers. I mean, I would definitely say no to strangers, but this is between me and the world. I like to screw around with them. I be a dick. Which really isn't nice. But for strangers. So, yeah. I mean... Gary was nice to her. I'm not sure how Shosh usually acted, but yeah. 
basically one night they decided to go out in the night and they went over across the spot where um, Gary woke up when he was six and yeah so basically they decided to go out on the raft get in their swimsuits and all that to go map or adding things to their map now basically they've been hearing noises through the woods and Gary got so paranoid he said hello now Shaw said really hello and then they keep on saying hello 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 to walk around with each other until they finally hear the noise saying hello so that was kind of creepy why I just did like hello damn it let's go to the first one but yeah they got terrified started to swim away on the raft and the raft started to fall apart they tried to add on their clothes by getting off their swimsuits turned out Gary's shirt went missing but they managed to got to Shosh, uh, I think Chris, yeah, no wait, not Chris's house. Um, what was his name? Gary, that's who I named him, Gary's house. And basically over there, Miss Stone f talk, what, talked to Gary and Gary and find himself in. And for once, Mr. said, not today or whatever. And basically the next morning, the no one, oh yeah, and they also lost both map pieces over the way trying to get back to the house. So, yeah. Now for the, is there anything else? Oh yeah, and the next day they found Mr. A bunch of black bags, which... Gary was unsure at the time, but realized they were a bag or a dead body bag, which I think Mr. murdered the, her husband and her two children and her committed suicide. Since it didn't say a body bag, I think it mentioned a normal amount of body bags. So the fifth one, not many sh plot twists. I mean, this series was still interesting, not as interesting as I usually go into it, but still good enough for me to continue on. Now, the next one was probably my favorite and probably the most intriguing. Now, basically, it's when our protagonist is now 15. Now, he lost contact with Josh. He remembered his first few days of high school and Shosh's sister and all that. He remembered making a friend with this big bully or whatever, which he knew he was friends with Shosh, and he thought if he was friends with Gary, he would. Gary would put it in a word for Shosh for Shosh to tell his sister about the big guy or whatever who used Gary to get to Veronica, which I will call Josh's sister. I'm not sure if it was the correct name, but yeah. So basically, um, Gary had feelings for Veronica at the age of X. Well, not feelings when most boys and girls thought, Ew, the opposite sex is disgusting. I don't want to touch him. But he did admire her good looks. So basically, when he grew up, he went to the movies a few times. And he eventually went there with his mates and there was a few girls and Veronica was there. Basically, they got into a conversation and they decided to make plans for next week. They had no real ways to contact each other. And he was kind of worried about getting Josh's old number, that Sh Josh would pick up the phone and they haven't spoken for the lo a long time. Now, basically, he thought, was worried about um, Josh. Oh, yeah, I already mentioned he was worried about Josh picking up the phone since they didn't spoken for a long time. Now, basically, 
base, I can't remember how, but somehow they got into contact. Now, they usually be talk again, and she admits she he, get she finds Gary attractive and all that, and they decide to make plans for another movie. They end up having a real good time and all that. Now, basically, they walk around the mall, and they exchange phone numbers. And all that. So, yeah. Um, they arrive at Veronica's car, and Gary needs to go to the toilet. I think Veronica admits she has feelings for Gary, or Gary admits he has feelings for Veronica. But, yeah, that's how that turns out. And basically, I think at when Gary returns, he sees Veronica wine in a pool of blood, which her corpse was mangled all up, which I was, I have to admit, horrified to hear. Now, when I heard that they, Veronica had feelings for What's-His-Face, I thought, oh, that's so cute. And when I heard her corpse was all mangled up, I was like, <laughs> What? No! No! So, yeah, that's how I felt. Um, basically, it turned out she was still alive, even though her piece of, or body was all mangled up. Now, she went to hospital, and he kept on denying that he, she would be okay, but he refused to admit that to her, and said, you're gonna be okay, you're gonna be okay. Now, basically, he kept on fitting her, they really didn't, it kept in contact daily, and basically what happened was, um, after a week or so, when he visited her every day, she told him to lay off the visits for a while. Now, they still exchanged, um, texts. And Frenchie, he got one saying, I love you. He was quite shocked to hear it, but yeah, he sent text back. And one night she said she was well enough to go to the movies, which she wasn't. So he talked to his mother about it. And he said he feel like Veronica may not like him. And his mother, I think, was quite shocked even though he knew his mother we didn't like him spending time with Veronica for some unknown reason but basically he found out that Veronica's been dead for three weeks after her or not really three weeks but after two weeks he visited her now basically he was all confused and all that since he still got messages from her and her last message being see you soon or something like that and basically him still shocked about Veronica sending him messages when she was really dead which I have to admit was quite weird and it turns out he's been getting pictures but since his cell phone couldn't show pictures he could have never saw them which I bet would have been more pictures of him now the now screams was probably the most intriguing one with the best shock twist you'd really have to watch the other ones to understand it but yeah the last one is called friends now basically friends described um, our main protagonist, Gary, how he met Josh, um, the last time he saw Josh, oh yeah, I also forgot to mention Screams, um, he talked to Veronica about what happened to Josh, it turns out when Josh was 13, he ran away, leaving a note on his pillow like how Gary did in the beginning footsteps. 
I'm sorry for not mentioning this earlier, my memory is quite awful. I mean, I've been talking for 25 minutes straight, so... Yeah, I'm probably gonna make it for half an hour, but... Why the hell not keep on talking and get a Pepsi afterwards? So, basically, friends... Ben described for the last time how he showed Josh, which usually he visits for daily, then became weekly, then became monthly, then probably barely once a month, and then his last one was at his 12th birthday. He was quite happy. Josh really didn't get him anything, but he was just happy to see him. He felt a bit unwell and decided to go home. So, Basically, um, I can't remember what, but basically it talked about Josh's parents, how his mum was full of grief, and she would still call out to her kids in denial of that, thinking they're still alive and all that, and she felt, well, you know, bad, and how she also used to visit Veronica after the horrific af accident in the um, scenes showing the car crash, which I believe was on purpose by the killer, but that's just my opinion. Um, basically, per the... What was it again? The... Um, Basically, yeah, she was in denial and she visited for one of her twice a day and how she we really never saw her daughter on the day she died because she had a late shift at work. Now, her, um, Veronica and Josh's father took a lot of jobs since the mother really didn't work a lot since she was full of sorrow and really couldn't focus and really wasn't capable of doing any work at all which I have to admit was quite sad and did honestly made me feel sad but not sad enough to cry because basically when you're trying to make me sad enough to cry you have to be very powerful or very inspirational or I'm not sure what the word is, but it has to be a huge impact to make me actually cry. Now, basically, Shosha's father got a job to do to, um, what was it again, to, I think it was, um, tear down some trees in the forest. Now, basically, he went over this weird lump or whatever and he decided to go through a few times with the machinery and decided to dig it up. Turns out it was a corpse so he decided to haul Gary's mom and since Gary's an adult by this point Gary also came. Now basically they found a man's corpse and under the man's corpse was Shosh. Now, basically, the father was horrified and he remembered the man paying him $100 to dig a hole where he was buried and where Josh was, which quite destroyed the father a lot since he dug his own son's grave. Now, basically, what happened was, I think the Josh bat the killer on the neck and the killer fell on top of him, suffocated Shosh and yeah, I think they gave Shosh a proper grave. Um, I'm actually getting quite emotional by this point, trying to remember the story. I'm very poor in explaining this, but I'm only doing this for a hobby and trying to spread over the word of a good story, but... Yeah, it explained how he was great friends with Shosh and how it taught him to see him dead like this. So, yeah, that's that. I mean, I would recommend reading the novels by yourself 
Mr. Creepypasta and the person who wasn't Mr. Creepypasta, but a person who he hired to read the story. I can't remember his name, but I have to admit they both did a... He did a great job at reading the story. So, yeah, I have to really thank him and especially the amazing, brilliant author whoever made the story. I don't know who you are, but you did a brilliant job. So, yeah, that's that. If you want me to review any other creepy pastas, then go ahead. If you actually want me to read a creepy pasta, then go ahead. But I'm really not sure how to do any editing stuff, so I could just ask a friend or two, but yeah, that's all and please leave a like, hate, whatever for the next video. If you hate the video, give me a good reason. And yeah, I really thank you for watching this video. I will see you next week or the next next week depending how my weekend goes. So yeah, this has been Pointless Opinions for another Pointless video. Hope you all enjoyed it. See you guys whenever. Bye.